NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, finally got to give his keynote speech for GTC. Is there anything we can learn that can be applied to the RTX 3000 series? Let's start with a recap of the latest rumors. Since my last video, there was a leak that suggests that Ampere would be a monster GPU with up to 8,192 cores. I didn't place much value in that since it seemed a bridge too far. If you look at previous generations of 80 Ti series cards, we can see on average a 20 to 30 percent increase in core counts and with this release that would represent a 77 percent increase way too high. Also, the core counts for the other cars looked way too familiar. The GA103 with up to 4,608 cores. That's the same number as a 2080 Ti. A GA103 with up to 3,584 cores. That's the same number as a 1080 Ti. And a GA104 with up to 2,560 cores. That's the same number as a 1080 or a 2070 Super. The only thing of interest here was 7 nanometers across the board and timing. A move to 7 nanometers was in stark contrast to the last rumor that I covered in my previous video, link above and below, where it was rumored to be produced on Samsung's process. Did Nvidia get amped over Big Navi? Would they pivot and return to the roots with TSMC from where they had been for the last 20 years? By now you have probably seen the story, translated by the retired engineer, where Nvidia was trying to get TSMC into a bidding war with Samsung and, well, that backfired on them. Seems their corporate hubris and lack of competition made them lazy and had them playing checkers when AMD was playing chess and buying up 7 nanometer fab capacity to try and shut Nvidia out. And the timing suggested that they would release the 70 and 80 series cards first and then respond to Big Navi with the 3080 Ti in the last quarter. That also aligns with my statements in my last video where I expect Nvidia to hold onto its flagship card until after AMD releases Big Navi. Going back to core counts, I still think the previous tweet by Kitty Corgi, also discussed in my last video, fits in very well for what you would expect, at least for the top three cards. The bottom two looked carryover and those will be released in 2021, so I don't think Nvidia has determined those just yet. When you look at the core counts of the top three, they really do align well with past generational upgrades. As for the performance increase percentage, it's too early to tell since the frequency will still need to be determined. I think the TI will follow the custom of being a cut down version of the Titan card. At least I hope it will since that would provide an interesting comparison as I'll show later. I also think you can expect previous trends where the 80 Ti series will be a similar class of card as the next gen 70 series card. If you look back, a 7080 Ti was similar to a 970. A 980 Ti was similar to a 1070. A 1080 Ti was similar to a 2070 Super. The Super cards is what we should have gotten in the first place. So expect a 2080 Ti to be similar to a 3070. From the GTC keynote, what do we learn about RTX? Not much. Some interesting points were the GA100 is a massive die at 826 millimeters squared. Nvidia will not have any issue producing a 5 to 600 millimeters squared RTX GPU on 7 nanometers. The GA100 uses HBM2 memory on 7 nanometers, like AMD's Radeon 7. However, I don't think they'll use it for RTX cards. In summary, I learned that AMD does not have a manufacturing advantage over Nvidia. Let's recap what we know about Big Navi. The latest leak shows the following die sizes. In my previous video, I talked about an RX 6900 XT at 500 millimeters squared, an RX 6800 XT at 380 millimeters squared, and that assumed full hardware ray tracing for both. This leak is interesting since it confirms my expectation for an RX 6800 XT card. However, with the die size being smaller at 340 millimeters squared, it may not have as much ray tracing hardware hardware, or it may actually have a reduced number of compute units to 56 instead of 60. Likewise, at the bottom, an RX 6700 XT at 240 millimeters squared would have 40 compute units, or maybe it's reduced to something like 36, but has some ray tracing hardware included. AMD is known to support a hybrid approach to ray tracing, unlike Nvidia, which provides a brute force method in dedicated silicon. AMD has been awarded patents for this hybrid approach that uses existing shader 
units and adds minimal fixed function hardware and provides for more programmer flexibility. That combined with Direct X12 Ultimate gives programmers a common API and while AMD's hardware implementation may not be as extensive as Nvidia's, it may be close enough for most people to not even notice the difference. This will enable AMD to provide minimal silicon hardware that is dedicated to ray tracing and their marketing department can claim they also have hardware based ray tracing just like Nvidia. I know what I'm about to say is not a message people want to hear, but I expect prices to be similar to where they are today, and here's why. I think in the current pandemic and the economic slowdown we are in, they will not be able to raise prices. It would be a pretty bold move, and I don't think Nvidia can move beyond $1,200 with the 3080 Ti. In relation to game consoles, I don't think AMD or Nvidia need to do anything to drop prices. With the performance of the 3070 being similar to a 2080 Ti, for what I expect expect to be $499 and an RX 6700 XT being similar in performance, maybe 5 to 10% less for $399. Those cards will provide superior performance to the game consoles where the game consoles will have what I expect to be more like a 2080 to 2080 super like performance for $500. Both companies are enjoying record or near record high stock prices and they need to support that with record high profit margins. Such is a market when you have a duopoly and direct from Jensen in his GTC keynote the more you buy the more you save what you won't get with pricing, you will get with performance improvements. The performance will greatly increase, and this is exciting as 4K monitor prices continue to fall. If you were thinking about buying a higher-end graphics card for 4K gaming, then my advice to you would be to stop, wait, save your money. You are close to one of the biggest releases in graphics cards by two companies who are vying for the top spot. I expect a large jump in performance with the next generation and the next generation cards will age much better and last much longer than the current gen cards. Both Turing and RDNA 1 were transitionary architectures. Nvidia used Turing to transition to hardware based ray tracing and DLSS and AMD to transition from GCN to RDNA. If Big Navi loses to Ampere this fall, then they will have no one to blame than themselves. Why does AMD telegraph their future moves so far in advance to their one competitor? Why did they mention it at their financial analyst day? Why did they even have the financial analyst day in March? Why, just two weeks later, did Microsoft detail specifics about RDNA 2 in the Xbox Series X? Why did Sony have to detail specifics about RDNA 2 in the PlayStation 5? Do you think buyers of consoles care about RDNA 2 specifics? Do you think console buyers are just going to walk if they don't get those details in March? Why didn't they wait until August or September for any of those events to release any of those details? Who really benefited by having those details come out early? Nvidia did. Those details provided enough information for Nvidia to react and pivot in time to get their high-end graphics cards on TSMC's 7 nanometer process node for release in time for later this year. Nvidia is poised to do it to AMD again. If you'd like a little history lesson, then check out my previous video, link above and below, for how Nvidia has owned AMD over the past decade. And maybe that's just the culture at AMD that keeps them from having that winning edge. They are just too excited to talk about future products they're working on. They are just too desperate to keep quiet to the financial analysts. They had a manufacturing edge and now that's gone. And maybe that is what makes this release this fall more interesting. Both companies will be releasing their high-end GPUs on the same manufacturing process. It's like pitting two race car drivers in identical race cars to find out who is the better driver. For this one, we'll find out who designed the better architecture. It will come down to which architecture is more efficient. Which one will enable them to run at higher frequencies? With the PlayStation 5 details, we know RDNA 2 will go up to 2.23 gigahertz. Will Nvidia's Ampere architecture allow it to clock higher? This is the competition we have been waiting for. This is your main attraction, big ticket fight of the year. Two companies with their best architectures going head to head, mano a mano. Big Navi versus Ampere. I can't wait. Like it if you learned something, share it, subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.